What's up, guys? So it's been a while since I made a video like this. Um, I'm kind of excited about this one, mostly because I'm excited about this game. So uh, either on F February 2nd or 3rd, Steam recommended uh, Valheim to me, Valheim, however you say it. And um, I think I bought it either the 2nd or the 3rd. Um, I'm a huge fan of survival games, especially when you can make like a your own, your own base, your own fort, building your own structures like that. That's huge for me. So that's why I find Ark so exciting. Well, that and dinosaurs, but this game is somewhat down the same lines that it's a survival game, and, uh, you know, you get to go through, uh, well, I mean, I don't really know how far you go because I haven't really played it a ton. I'm still building wooden walls and whatnot, and as you can see, like, examples of, like, this little town here, I mean, they're building, they're building castle structures. That's totally amazing, and full-size boats. I mean, I just have, like, a little raft. This is, this is, I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Um... So anyhow, but basically this video is going to be about installing a dedicated Valheim server on Linux. And I do this with my Arc instance too, so that I can play Arc for my, with my own equipment. Um, and so my Arc server is private for me and my friends and family. And the Valheim server will be the same, but I wanted to show you guys exactly how it is that I uh, installed and, and got this up and running. Um, it's not super complicated. It actually kind of follows the same path as, as I did with the Arc server instance. I don't know if you've seen the Arc server dedicated Linux, but it's the same basic idea. What we're going to do is we're going to use um, a base Ubuntu instance. Uh, you can use whatever's the latest, I think. I mean, I built this on an 18.04 just because I already had the ISO downloaded. I'm pretty sure the, the newer versions are, are uh, just fine as well. But if you have any issues, I mean, I guess you could always start with the same version that I did. Um, I did give this particular VM two vCPU and eight gigs of RAM. Now, when I first started the server build, I didn't do that. I gave it one vCPU and four gigs of RAM. And I I thought I was running into issues with getting the server started, but I, re I don't think I actually was. I think what I was running into was a resource issue, and it wasn't enough vCPU to start the server, well, at least not in a timely fashion. I thought it was locked up or hung up or whatever. But uh, as soon as I get two vCPUs and eight gigs of RAM, it was significantly better performance, like significantly better. So, uh, so if you if you're wondering like what, so if this is a dedicated host, that's one thing. But if you're running it at a VM, give it at least two vCPU, and and if you got lots of RAM, this particular box I run it on actually has 128 gigs of RAM. So given eight gigs of RAM is no big deal. I only got a handful of VMs that run on there for my lab stuff, anyways, and so I've got lots of extra RAM. One last final prerequisite is according to the documentation by um, uh, Iron Gate Coffee Stain Publishing or whoever, I guess Iron Gate's the developer. So, doc, so Iron Gate made a, a small little PDF that you can view that's part of the Steam download package, the dedicated download package. And uh, it, it kind of goes over some basic steps, but it's pretty, pretty vague in my opinion on, on those steps. But anyhow... It talks about you're going to need to NAT forward these ports to your on your your internal server. Um, I read some other articles where somebody said they just did this port only, or another person said just these two ports. Um, the official documentation says all three, so I did all three. Uh, you can play around with that if you want to. So here's also a comment like right here. It basically says these are the these are the uh, port range that you need to forward. And so that's called port forwarding or like a, an actual router that's just called uh, NAT. So uh, let's get started on this. This is going to be um, hands-on. We're going to go through, uh, let's see if I've got the state of the server back to the way it's supposed to be. Yes, perfect. So, so basically, um, we're going we're gonna to make, we're going to install the service, but we're going to install everything or the, the Valheim server, but we're going to install it underneath of a user called uh, Steam. And I do that because I want the service to run as Steam so it doesn't have elevated rights. I don't want it to run as root or anything weird like that. Or my user that I sign in as, I want it to run as its own containerized uh, user account. Containerized is probably not the correct term there, but um, for security purposes, I'm running it in the context of its own user. Anyhow, let's get started. So basically, um, I kind of cheat on this. So for you diehard Linux guys, I just elevate to root and just work and root for the most of the part. Um, the first thing we're going to do, though, is let's let's do an app app upgrade, update and upgrade, just to make sure that we're at the latest package-wise. Shouldn't take too long. I don't think there's a ton of updates to be done. Yeah, it's moving pretty fast. 
the server that runs this is backed by SSDs, and so it runs pretty quick with the VMs. And actually, I do have my Arc server running right now, too, on the same physical host, so it does pretty good. <clears throat> uh, we're gonna, so the next thing we're going to do is add that multiverse repository, and then I need to add the 32-bit excuse me, 32-bit architecture because the Steam command is the uh, application we're gonna, going to install to uh, then install Valheim server. And the Steam command application, uh, I believe, is a 32-bit app. I don't think it installs correctly if you don't do that. So if you want, you can mess around with not doing the add architecture. I didn't. I had that exact command from when I did my Arc server instance, and it's the, basically the same Steam command program. So uh, as soon as it gets done here, which should be shortly. So I'm kind of I'm very excited about this game. I I didn't realize that it had so much potential when I bought it, but man, I think it's going to be an amazing amazing game. So let's go ahead and say add apt repository mul multi multiverse. Gosh, I can't type, can I? Okay, enabled. I want to. Add architecture for i386, which is 32-bit. Mm, did I type something wrong? Arc, yeah, I didn't spell architecture correctly. Hope if I'd spelled it right. And then apt update, just because we added a new uh, repository and we added a different architecture. So just wanted to do that. So now let's do an apt install steam command. Go ahead and install that and its dependencies. Uh, yes, I agree with this, of course. Otherwise, I can't use it, so I don't have a choice. Uh, the next thing I want to do is add the Steam user. So I'm going to say user add. I wanted to create the home volt path. I want to define a shell type, it's bash. And let's set a password for it. And let's go ahead and say Steam. That's the username. All right, now it should have created a Steam folder. Perfect, exactly what I expect. I'm gonna SU over and change user to Steam. So now I'm the Steam user, and if you look at my present working directory, I'm in the Steam folder, perfect. So the first thing I wanna do is create a symbolic link for, um, for the Steam command so that it sits inside this folder directory so they can execute Steam command like that. There we go. And the next thing I wanna do is install is Valheim server from using Steam command. So the Steam ID for the dedicated server is 896.660. And, but really you're just gonna copy and paste this command here. And it is going to install it in the Steam folder. So the Steam user folder, slash home, slash Steam, and then slash Valheim server. So I want it underneath its own directory inside of that, uh, the home path for Steam. It's not a super large game, which is great. So it shouldn't take super long to uh, go ahead and install this. Uh, so, yeah. so I need to pay attention, I guess, to um, my commands here because they're probably going to be behind my face, aren't they? So let's just go ahead and move this window like that so that my, my ugly mug is not covering stuff you might want to see. All righty. Almost done. Extracting. Installing. Extracting. Connecting. Actually, I now I think it has to do. Now I think maybe it has to do the actual download of the game. Maybe not. Yeah, there it goes. So the game is. Let's see. What's that number? One gig. So that makes. I mean, that's the same size as uh, the game itself when I installed it on my desktop. Doesn't take too long. I have actually a gigabit internet, so. Uh, the download's pretty fast. It doesn't run full gig, though, in case you're wondering. I think last time I tested, I got 800 megabit or something like that. All right, so the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to create a startup script for starting the Valheim server. And I got this script. Like, most of the contents of this script actually came from the example that you'll see in the Valheim folder. So now we've installed Valheim. So if you go to the Valheim folder, again, we're back in the home, home Steam um, user, user folder. And so if I go to Valheim server, you can see I've got it installed the, the Valheim server here. So the actual executable is this one down here. It's the Valheim server.x8664. Um, this is the start server script I was talking about. So if you say like cat start 
server.shell. You can see it has the basic command here on, on how to start it, but um, I'm using a variant of that. What I really wanted was some of these exports because I, I guess they're used for the application. Um, I uh, to be honest with you, I don't think I tested without these, so it doesn't. I don't know if it really works with or without them. I made some changes to this. Obviously, I didn't call it my server. Um, there were some flags that I found online where people were doing like dash um, no graphics and dash batch mode or something like that. So I stuck those in there. I'm not 100% certain they're actually required, but it doesn't. It hasn't affected my server to have them there. So you can just you know if you want to test, you can omit them. Otherwise, just do it the way I did it. So um, let's go ahead and edit another file. We're going to call this Valheim dot shell and I'm going to copy paste this I'm going to have this stuff here in the description if it if it doesn't fit in the description it'll be in a link somewhere that you can just click on and open the text file and be able to view it but basically this is what I want inside my shell script um, I'm going to run this as a service right so we're going to we're going to put this into the start for this into system control for uh, an actual daemon and uh, it's very important that you have the script oops that you have um, the definition for the script type up here, like which which um, processor you're using. What is that script processor? Is that what I'm looking for? A compiler? It's not a compiler, but whatever that's called. Basically, I'm saying you need to run this as bin bash. And without that, uh, you, the service will say that it's not formatted correctly and it can't actually run this. Um, so here's what I was talking about. The, the dash, no graphics, dash, batch mode. Again, I don't think those are necessary. The name here defined as Geekhead, that's actually the name that you'll see when you try to join a community server. So this is what's visible to everybody. And then this is the world. So if you want, the world, I guess, could be multiple. I haven't tested this, but I guess if you wanted to change your worlds, you just change the name that's here. This is just something that's on the back end, your server, right? So those are like the instances of the worlds you have saved on your server. So you could flip around worlds if you wanted to. You just start a new one, I guess, by defining a new name here. So instead of Geekhead v1, I could do Geekhead v2, and now it's a new server. Dash password. Obviously, if it's a public server and you don't want people joining, please put a password in. Don't make it something stupid simple like this. Make it something that's a little harder than that. This is just an example. And then uh, dash public one means uh, that's a flag, a binary flag. And basically, that means public yes. And so, so that's it. I'm going to go ahead and save this. Um, I need to change uh, execute or add execute to that so start nope 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 i didn't spell that right so now it's a now it's an actual executable shell script so now we have the start script down that's good uh one other thing i wanted to do though was down in the, in the root folder here i want to create a check log file and i use this just to be able to check the state of the the service itself and it's really simple it's just a journal control i just for some reason I always forget the commands here and so it's better to just have it in a quick little shell script. This is obviously not necessary to make the server run. I just do it so that I can say check log like this and it'll show me the log info. Obviously it's going to error out here because there's no service yet. So the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to exit out of the Steam user context, go back to root, and we're going to go ahead and edit the Valheim service file. So right now obviously it's not there. There's nothing there. I'm going to copy paste all this cuz I don't feel like typing it. Uh, again, it'll be in the description somewhere. And so the the interesting things here are uh, the descriptions, I think, is important. Um, some of these, like user and group, that's who it's running as, right? The service is going to run as user, group, uh, Steam. And uh, the exec start pre. So this command happens every time the service stops and starts. And basically what it's going to do then is every time your service stops and, or starts, rather, it'll update the, the Valheim server. So if there's ever updates to the server, just restart your service and it'll automatically update the server. And then the exec start is obviously that script we just edited. And this is what actually starts your Valheim server. Working directory is is where do you start executing things? So where, where, what's your base folder that you're going to run everything from? And that's basically it. So I'm going to go ahead and right quit save that. Now you have to say system control uh, daemon reload. And now it, under, now it just ingested or process the valheim server dot service so that it's part of the the daemon uh, server control structure i just fumbled through that i'm sorry i don't really know a ton about the system control clearly so anyhow but basically what that does is it now says oh there's a new dot service file i need to process it and add it to my list of services if you will so um, let's go ahead and start it so system control start valheim you can tab complete that and uh, let's see what it does. Now, this is going to take a little while, I think, to start. What's interesting about this server is it actually is a, it seems like a fairly 
fairly fairly heavy server. Like it's not a super lightweight app, I don't think. Um, this error I get all the time about couldn't create a convex mesh. I don't think that's an issue because I got my server running just fine. That has something to do with, I believe, Unity. I believe this game is written in Unity, and so I, I feel like that's a Unity error. Uh, it doesn't affect the, the server run, so I'm not quite sure why that's even a big deal, honestly. Um, so, and, and I get errors about SDL. I don't, I don't know why I'm getting those, but it's not like it's, it's just a warning. It's not an actual error. So I guess it doesn't matter. It still works. And to be honest with you, I think it's, uh, as soon as that dungeon DB start happened, I'm pretty sure it's active now. Like you can see this right here. This was, if I remember right, this is the last line that you see before it's, it's actually functioning. So, so we're basically we're basically done. I mean, the server is literally running right now. So now let's go ahead, do some final touches here. I'm going to enable the Valheim server so that it runs every time the system boots. Um, and I guess the next thing we do is test it out. So let's go ahead and go back to Steam. Let's go to Library. I'm going to go ahead and play this game. And here we go. Man, this game is cool, too, because it's super lightweight. And so if you're if you're an Arc game player, like Arc is such a huge product, takes so long to load it. This game, on the other hand, doesn't quite take that long. Uh, I'm gonna turn the music off because I'm not sure if it's copyright, and I have a feeling I'll get flagged or something stupid for that. Um, so let's see. I'm gonna go ahead and hit start game. I've already got a cr character created because I've played this before, right? And the characters aren't aren't related to the server instances themselves. They're they're separate. So you can join any server with the same character. So I'm going to go ahead and, and, and it's interesting. It's like when you start, like they talk about in here, they're like, hey, if you join an online server with your game character, you could die and people could steal your stuff. They could hack you. You know what I mean? Like, good luck. Like, don't don't lose that. That would be, you know, that'd be a huge bummer. Um, so basically what you want to do is you want to join the game instead of start game. So I'm going to go join. And you want a community, so it's going to be a community server, and you type in the name of your server that you just created. So in my instance, this is Geekhead, and you can literally see that the server's right here. It's already up and running, totally visible, that fast. Um, if you don't see it, wait for this select server number to finish like that. So at the time of this video, there was like 4,800 servers, and I think it was the same this morning too, around that number. So make sure that this finishes counting before you give up and think, hey, where's my server? It doesn't exist. Like, make sure you wait till the, all the servers have been populated before you come to that conclusion. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit connect. And it's going to load. Now it's going to ask for my password. And it should put me right in. Now, I've already joined the server once before, so it should just start me right back. No, I have not, actually. Maybe I have. I don't know. I restored a snapshot on the VM, so I don't remember the current state. Yeah, I have arrived, so I guess this is my first time hitting it, hence I'm why I'm standing in the center. And that's it. I am literally now connected to my um, share, my dedicated Valheim Linux server. And now my friends can connect and play with me on the same server. Plus, it's always running, which is the nice part, right? Now my server's running all the time so that anybody wants to play can hop on and play. The world is always existing. Uh, you don't have to wait for me to start the game and share off a server. It's a dedicated server. It's always going to be there. And if you've got hardware laying around at home, uh, this is a really good, really good solution because uh, I'm pretty sure if you had to pay for Valheim server monthly, it's got, I mean, it'd probably be five, ten bucks a month. I would assume it's probably similar to Minecraft or Arc instances and and actually, Arc's probably even more because it requires more resources than Minecraft does. So, so I'd imagine you probably spend a decent amount for a dedicated Valheim server. Plus, I don't know how many people are, are the game's brand new, so how many people are actually doing it. So that all aside, I say make your own, host your own server. And uh, that's it. I guess that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope it was helpful for you uh, getting your own Valheim server up and running. Thanks for watching.